Do you have trouble obtaining currency? Do you get a little sad whenever you finish Act 10 and see your favorite streamer in red maps? Do you find yourself re-rolling or outright quitting on day two? Well, fear not, you have come to the right place, Exile. League Start can be a rough time for those of us who do not dedicate our lives to this game, but that does not mean that it is impossible for us to have great success. But I have developed a game plan that with a little thinking ahead, just could lead you to whatever goal you set for yourself. These that I have deemed the five pillars of League Start will be essential to making sure PoE doesn't sit idle on your computer for another league. So without further ado, let's move on on to the first pillar. I know, duh, can't really play the game if you don't have a build to play, but there should be at least some thought into what you want to dedicate possibly dozens of hours to, especially if not liking the build is a reason that you've quit in the past. Now I'm sure that this is THE league where your lacerate scion is going to take the world by storm and kill all the ubers, but first you may need to set your expectations. Not every build is going to be league star viable, and while that's a tough pill to swallow, that doesn't mean you need to watch Ty Ty Killer's sexiest league starters in order to to have a good time. You can play whatever you want, but remember that if your build is gated by specific uniques or expensive gear that you have a choice to either play a different build on the same class and pivot once the time is right, or start on a well documented and successful build to earn enough money for the build that you actually want to play. League start builds are often referred to as such because they can work well on very little investment, but do end up falling off towards the later stages due to them having a lower ceiling with a high. These have been proven to work effectively on little investment and have carried some of your favorite PoE content creators to their coveted Day 3 Mageblood. If you want to find these League Starter builds, simply open up YouTube at least two weeks before League Start, and then open your eyes. Many of these builds have been crafted by content creators who do this shit for a living, all for us casual players to suckle upon their teats of knowledge only to read half of the guide and then spam them with questions in the comments. Like come on Ziz, on my EA champion I put extra fire damage on my bow and quiver and my fire explosions are only doing a third of the damage that yours are. You must either be a liar or a scammer and I will not stand for this injustice. That being said, it is also, surprise surprise, a fucking video game and if you don't like league starters, there is nothing stopping you from starting what you want. You might just have to work a little harder. If you choose to start something slightly off meta but you know is not a literal troll build, I and many others would advise that you do a practice run. This run can either help you decide if you want to actually leak start this or help you develop a plan for how to actually make the leak start easier. Doing a practice run up to around late white maps or early yellow maps will take around 10-ish hours for somewhat experienced players and will let you get a game plan on what you need to be successful. Things to note while playing this run. Number one, socket colors. Chromes can be hard to come by during league start. Number two, any skill swaps that you might need. Some of the skills you want to league start might be level gated, so you need to figure out what you need to get to the level of your original skill. Number three, when to do lab runs. If you're working with a transfigured gem, then you're going to need to farm lab at some point. But at the same time, if you want to get through the campaign faster, it is entirely possible to skip lab until later on. Number four, when you need to upgrade gear. Unfortunately, not every build is Lightning Arrow that can solo Katava with Yeezys and a cool stick they found in Act 3. And number five, when you'll need to farm currency. Some builds need money to get going, even in early maps, so taking breaks towards Act 6 or Act 7 to go heisting for a bit could be a good option. If you have a plan, there is almost nothing stopping you from making an off-meta build work. Your enjoyment of the game far exceeds the actual efficiency of league starting. Alright, listen exiles and listen carefully. Are you ready? You are not Ben. You are not Ty Ty Killer. 
I know a lot of people really want to achieve the speed that racers can get, but if you do not pace yourself, you will burn yourself out instead. Trying to get the most optimal pathing, trying to skip all the skill points that aren't necessary to moving on to the next act, trying to skip all the respec books, you do not have to play like this if you do not want to. Play how you want to play. Nobody is timing you. Nobody's going to shame you for beating the axe in 7 hours, and nobody's going to suck your dick if you beat them in under three. If you want to attempt to play at that high a level because you're an aspiring racer, then I don't know what you're doing here. I'm glad to have you, but if you strive to achieve that level of play, you really should go watch their VODs, not some silly little eyeball shouting. I think I beat this shit out of a small child and- Regardless of racing, pacing also has to do with the length, the endurance, the dexterity of your- uh, sessions. I know League Start is exciting, but please, for the sake of your mental and physical health, do not play for 15 hours on the first day if you aren't able to. League Start is more than just the first day. If you go to sleep, it will still be there when you wake up the next day, so please do not strain yourself for some silly old game. Stocks go up, stocks go down. What stocks don't do is disappear completely. That's just a dumb little way to explain that there are a million different ways to make money, and just because there are more optimal ways doesn't mean you can't make money doing something else. It's no secret that a lot of people usually spend time with Heist, Expedition, and Legion early on into the league, so why are you acting like you don't understand how people are able to move so much currency? In PoE, when it comes to money, the answers are always right in front of you. There's a thousand different videos explaining 10,000 different methods, all that have varying degrees of success, but what usually ends up killing your league start is either your decision paralysis or too high of expectations. Honestly though, it's not your fault. So many of these videos go over insane strategies and profits where they're calculating selling everything including the fucking alteration shards, stuff that you most likely don't want to sell. I want this video to be useful for times to come and not just for the upcoming league, so I won't give any super specific details and strategies, but I will say this. Whatever profit a content creator is making off of a strategy, look at the investments and keep them the same. Look at the profits and multiply it by around 0.7 or 0.8. Chances are you will not be willing to sell the fucking dirt on your boots for chaos, and you also won't be able to clear a map in 4 seconds, so whatever their profit per hour is, please take it with a large grain of salt. If you want a recommendation, I think the best profit making guides I've seen are from Empyrean Gaming, Grimro, and Milky Bee. While they are not all immune to the issues above, they usually do not overhype for the sake of views. And because I feel I literally cannot hold myself back from working in the next pillar anymore, we should go ahead and talk about it. This pillar goes hand in hand with pillar 3, but holy shit, you would not believe how foreign of a concept this is to some people, so listen up. I am someone who loves Expedition, Ritual, and occasionally Blight. I know for a fact that I do not like Heist, Breach, or Abyss. So if the next league comes and you're now able to shove abyss jewels up your ass for permanent upgrades, or you can now put breach rings on your pecker and prices of both skyrocket, I will not do them. Do what makes you fucking happy, because I know I am going to farm more when I am playing something I like rather than something that I hate. Fun is what matters most. Do a strategy you like and isn't net negative and money will come. It's honestly super hard not to make money in this game by just playing, so please just play what you want, but make sure you know how and what you are selling. Once you find out what you like to do, that's when you can circle back to Pillar 3 and look up a strategy for it, cause not everything is super self explanatory. I sat there going for chess for the first four leagues of farming expedition wondering why I wasn't making any money. Don't be stupid, don't be me. Yeah, it's cliche, it's expected, but it's also those things 
for a reason. Throughout this video, I have made one thing clear. Your league start is only successful if you are enjoying what you are doing. Being miserable but rich is not better than being happy and poor when it comes to the entire reason you are playing a video game. Make sure whatever you're doing, whatever build you follow, however long your sessions are, whatever mechanic that you're farming, that you're having fun while doing it. Countless times I have tried to either play a build I hated and ended up feeling so behind because I rerolled on day three, or spent hours and hours farming strategies I hated and those leagues were the ones I had played the least in. Video games are meant to be fun, so even though success is different for everyone on these league starts, if you're having fun, then you're not losing. I hope you enjoyed, and I can't wait to see you all on the beaches. Good luck, exiles.